Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Apostle Darlin C. Turner here. And I want to welcome you, but we're coming for the purpose of prayer, to bombard heaven, to, to take his yoke and learn of him, all right? And so that our prayers will become effectual and fervent and avail of much. Because many times, you and I, we know that we're taught, especially during this time, what does everybody say? Saints, we need to pray. We need to pray. But you know, it's it's really a few times and just not as often as we should. We have to take the time to teach people how to pray. Okay. Now, so this is what this is about. Isn't it apropos? Isn't it right on time that this would be the subject matter? the blood of Jesus. How many of you know that we need to get back to the blood? When's the last time that you heard a message, an exhortation on the blood of Jesus? This teaching and my teaching going forward, I'm just going to teach on a little bit at a time, okay, so that you will have the understanding of why we teach and why we plead the blood of Jesus. Because some of you that uh, may know your Bible uh, and, and, and may be, be, be very aware that in essence, Jesus, this is a true statement. Jesus never taught us to plead the blood of Jesus, okay? When he taught us how to pray and when we see the examples of prayer in scripture, no, you really cannot find where anyone said uh um, that I plead the blood of Jesus or by the blood of Jesus. Um, but I'm going to share with you throughout, uh, I won't get to that probably today, but I'm going to share with you throughout scripture and study why we plead the blood of Jesus. It is scriptural. Okay. Although you may not find it literal, it is scriptural, right? Cause everything that, uh, is, um, not literal doesn't mean doesn't it doesn't follow the uh, scriptural basis right or it's built on a scriptural principle so the first thing that we want to take note and again we're only here about uh i only teach about 10 minutes and then we pray okay but firstly i want you to understand those of you who really I want to take your prayer level to another level and the effectiveness of your prayer because the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avail of much is that you need to understand that prayer is a legal matter. The language of prayer is legal. And I want to say this, I'm going to have a pre-recorded uh, showing of this teaching with all the slides. I'm going to post that later, okay, where you can see the slides because I have a whole presentation on this, um, but it just wouldn't load up today, so I had to do it this way. But prayer is a legal matter. Look at the language that's in the Bible. What? God is what our judge, and he's the only righteous judge. He tells us how to enter his what? His courts, right? Enter my courts with praise. Come on. So we enter his courts. Does that say legal? Does that sound legal? And then he tells us to make our petitions known before him, to bring our petitions with thanksgiving. Wow. That sounds like we're in a court and we're coming before God and we're coming with a case. And guess what? Satan is our accuser. God bless you too, Calvin. Satan is our accuser. Huh? And Jesus is our advocate. Come on, I want you to say prayer is a legal matter. Come on, I want you to never approach prayer the way you've been approaching prayer. Prayer is serious. Prayer is a case. Prayer is about you getting justice and getting every benefit and every blessing that God has for you. Prayer is about going before God because Satan doesn't want you to have what the blood of Jesus paid for you. Prayer is legal. Listen, I want to know if somebody took your property, if somebody took what belongs to you, if they stole it, if they got it in some kind of way that was unethical and dishonorable, would you casually or would you not show up in court? That's what I want to know today. Would you not show up in court? Some of you saints of God, you're not showing up in court. 
You're not showing up in prayer. And there, and instead of complaining, getting uh, depressed, becoming oppressed, okay? And instead of you acting like you have no, uh, uh, no way of escape and no way to uh, resolve the matter, you have uh, resorted to not, in essence, when you don't pray, you are not showing up in court. That's like missing your court date when you miss prayer. Come on. The, the, the judge is waiting. And listen, this is a fixed trial. It's a fixed trial. Why is it fixed? Because of the blood of Jesus. Because of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is the evidence. It is the evidence that, that the judge, our father, needs to call you not guilty. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run therein and are what? Safe. In other words, we are not guilty. And so the blood of Jesus, we use it to plead it because there are scriptures that we're going to go into that tell us that through the blood of Jesus, we have been, he, the blood has reconciled all matters. I believe that's found in Colossians, Colossians 1 and 20. Okay. The blood of Jesus reconciles everything. And when we plead the blood, then every benefit, every blessing, it reminds God of the evidence of the covenant that he made with us through his son to cause us to never be condemned. That we will never have to be condemned, that we have the benefit of what Psalm 103, that he forgiven all of our iniquities. He's healed all of our diseases. He satisfies our mouth with good things. He renew our youth like the eagle. So the prayer is legal. And I just want to challenge some of you to get back to the blood of Jesus. Do, do not, uh, uh, do not, I know you're not denying the blood, but some of us have not understood the blood and don't understand that when we're in a critical state like this, the blood of Jesus is very well needed. No, you do not have to pray the blood of Jesus every time you pray, but particularly in critical times. Listen, the blood of Jesus speaks just like the blood of Aaron spoke. Come, I'm sorry, I said Aaron, I mean Abel. You remember the story in Genesis, right? When Cain killed his brother. The blood. Listen, if you know that Abel's blood speak, what do you think the blood of Jesus does? The blood of Jesus speaks. It cries out on your behalf. Jesus is seated in heavy, heavenly places. The Bible tells us he's our advocate and his blood speaks forever on our behalf. It is a witness and it testifies and it is the evidence before God the Father that we have to be exonerated. Did you know that I'm sure you do because a lot of you all like those shows that are, what is that, CSI and all that stuff. Do you understand that blood is one of the key uh, points of evidence on a crime scene? And just one drop of blood can change the trajectory of somebody's life. What do you mean? I mean, people that were illegally and unrighteously jailed and given life and death sentences. Be, if they go and find just one drop of blood, that one drop of blood can free them because the blood tells the story. Within the blood, there's all kinds of information. Do you know from the blood of, of just a human that they can tell whether the victim die from suicide or whether they die from murder because the blood tells and has the pattern and the story in it. And so just from getting the blood, that's why they, they scoop up all the blood samples because the blood tells the story. Why do we plead the blood of Jesus? Because the blood tells the story. The blood speaks of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that he died for us 
Come on. The blood speaks and it is the evidence that wins the case, that closes the case, that causes us to be exonerated from all sin and all death because of the blood. And when you're in particularly a situation that is serious, that is critical, that you that it must be effectual and fervent. Listen, we ain't talking about you want a, a parking space right near the door. Come on. We're not talking about stuff like that. But we're talking about like when the children of Israel were facing all kinds of plagues, y'all, just like we're in right now. And that the firstborns were dying all in Egypt. Listen, saints, I want you all to remember. I know we know the story, but let's grab the connotation of the story. They had to do something to protect themselves. Come on here. They didn't just, oh, God is our God. God is our father. And they didn't do anything. God gave them specific instructions on what to do. And they had to take the blood of the lamb and they had to, what, put the blood over the doorpost. I want to know what are you doing right now? I'm not talking about earning your salvation, but I'm telling you, faith always has a work. Faith without works is dead. And so, you know, one of the one things I know you're supposed to do is what? Is go into the courts of heaven and show up concerning the case. The case, do you know that there's an accuser that is, that is coming against you, your family? Do you understand that there's an accuser every day that is accusing you, accusing your children, accusing your grandchildren, accusing your family of something or other? And God is waiting. He is waiting for somebody to stand in the gap, to make up a hedge. He's waiting for somebody to Put him in remembrance of his word. Put him in remembrance of his covenant. Put him in remembrance of the blood of Jesus so that he can free you, so he can close this case, so that the accuser will be, cannot come in, just like the destroyer could not come in because of the blood. That's why we plead the blood of Jesus because the blood, is a testimony. It is evidence. It is a reminder of the covenant that God made with us through his son, because the blood speaks and through the blood, just like in the natural, the blood tells the story. The blood has all the evidence. The blood speaks just like it solves murders and crimes and tells what can happen or what happened and what occurred. The blood speaks of, to the heavenlies, to every demonic force, to principalities and powers. It speaks and lets them know and reminds them of what Jesus did for us, that he died for us, that no weapon formed against us. Where this blood is, where we speak it, come on, where we decree it, that the blood is the, is the, the evidence and it is the power that causes all principalities and powers to have to cease because of the blood. Hallelujah. Because of the blood of Jesus. So, although there is no scriptural reference to say that this is how you pray the blood, we're going to be seeing all month long and seeing the scriptures that talk about the blood and that we're justified through the blood. And so those of us who understand and you can take the inference in the scriptures, that is why we plead the blood because we know that prayer is a legal matter, that prayer, come on, is like being in the courts of heaven That and we know that there is an accuser, people. Please don't forget in this modern day Christianity that you have an accuser. Please don't forget that you are in a war. Please don't forget that we are in a serious state. And it's only the prayers of the righteous that availeth much. Please don't forget 
Come on, as we've learned how to live large and be in charge and be prosperous and all that, don't forget that there is a case every day against you and your family. Don't forget, come on here, that Jesus turned over the table. You'll see that before that triumphant entry and during that whole time and that whole incidence, that was the time Jesus went in the temple and turned the tables over. That was the time. There was a whole lot of stuff going on. That was the time that he passed the tree and he cursed it. Listen, so, so I know we like to talk about the Palm Sunday and his triumphant entry, but if you really read the whole matter, listen, I want you to understand this, people of God, because this is what's going on right now. Wherever there's triumph, there's a big battle because the effectual fervent door, I'm sorry, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. But also the Bible says that there is an effectual door, but there are what? Many adversaries. So let's not forget that we have adversaries. But guess what? For every adversary, we already have a fixed case because of the blood of Jesus. Let's pray. Pray with me, Father. And then I want you to do this. I want you to, this is your homework. I want you to study Romans 8, 29 through 30. That is our foundational scripture for next week regarding the blood of Jesus and how the blood justifies you and I. So when you don't even, when you're guilty, listen, you better call on the blood of Jesus. Come on. Because even Job 22 and 30 lets us know that because of the righteous ones, and none of us are righteous from our own activity, but we're righteous only because of what? The blood. And because those of us who plead the blood, who have made a covenant with our Savior, and along with that covenant comes the blood, he gives us and hands us the evidence that frees us from every case. Job 22 and 30 lets us know that, listen, and some of you need to pray this today, that Job 22 and 30 lets us know that anybody connected to you that's part of your island, that's part of who you cover in prayer, guess what God says? I'll deliver them even though they're guilty. Oh my God, I wish I could run. God says, Job 22 and 30, somebody put that on the screen, look it up. You need to put this in your prayer arsenal. That even though I'm talking about that wayward child, I'm talking about that loved one that you know is wrong. They did what, what is they're being accused of. But God says, because they're part of your house, they're part of you, and because you have the blood, listen, then you, because of you, I'll free them. I'll deliver them, even though they're guilty. That's the power of the blood. Come on, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I just plead the blood of Jesus over every household, the Hairston, the Hobson, the Harris household, the Turner household, the Tucker household, God, the Coleman household, the Smith household, God. We plead the blood over every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, the Brooks household, the Reed household, the Walker household, God, every household that's and the Liberty International Network and everyone listening, God, by, uh, by this means, God, we plead the blood and we stand before you, God, and we enter your courts with praise and thanksgiving. God, we're thanking you. We repent of our sin. We turn away from all unrighteousness, all ungodliness, oh God. We repent, Father, for neglecting so great a salvation, for neglecting, God, the understanding of the power of the blood of the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God, we repent and we turn away, God, from our casualness, God, from our slothfulness, from our inability even, God, to stand in the gap and make up a hedge. We repent, God, because now we understand the power of the blood that we carry, God, that the world needs the blood, that because of us, oh God, when we pray, God, when we take the opportunity to enter your courts, to come into your presence, to seek your face, oh God. 
that because of the blood, we can turn nations. We can stop viruses. God, we can cure cancer. God, that we have the power because you've given us dominion. You gave us dominion from the, the beginning of creating mankind. You turned it over to us, oh God, and we're not waiting on you. We now understand that you're waiting on us because you legally gave us the authority. You gave the earth as a lease to us, oh God, and we are living in it. We are responsible for it. We are the ones, God, that have to take our authority, take the dominion, take what you have given to us and plead the blood and use every tool and every benefit and every blessing that you have loaded us with every day, even the mercy that you renew every day on our behalf, God, so we have no excuse to not come boldly to your throne, boldly, God, and proclaim your blessings, proclaim the blood of Jesus. And so, God, right now, as we repent, as we bow, God, as we ask and we receive your forgiveness by faith because you promise to forgive us. You promise when we confess our sins, you're faithful and you're just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness because of the blood, because of the blood, because of the blood, God. We can come over and over and over because of the blood, God. You hear us and we don't have to be fearful, God, that there is no torment in our life because perfect love casts out fear. There is no fear in your love, oh God, and the power of the blood, the blood of Jesus is filled with love. It's filled with mercy. It's filled with grace. It's filled with compassion. And so God, we're giving you the glory for the blood. And we're standing in the gap. We, your people, as we humble ourselves, God, as we have repented and we cry out for the blood of Jesus to cover America, to cover our families, God, to cover our minds, God, the blood of Jesus to cover us, God, as we will not uh, fail to oppression and depression, as we will not, God, sit here and complain because we have the blood of Jesus the, and the name of Jesus to which every knee will bow and every tongue will confess and that every principality and every spirit and of darkness and wickedness must bow to the name of Jesus. And so God, we thank you for your blood and we plead the blood over our homes, over our possessions, oh God, over our destiny, over our purpose, that the destroyer cannot come in. That as the enemy is attempting to bring fear, God, as the enemy would want us to give up, complain, God, we will not, we will not speak forth anything except what your blood speaks. And your blood speaks according to your covenant. Your blood speaks according to the law of the spirit. Your blood speaks according According to the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, God, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. And we, ro we root out, we tear down, we destroy. And we loose away every word, every demonic prophecy. God, every demonic doctrine, all mindsets, strongholds, behaviors, proclivities. God, that go against your word, that go against your blood. Even beliefs that we have taken on, we, we loose them, we relinquish them. We resign from them now in the name of Jesus and we declare the blood of Jesus. We thank you that the blood covers our foolishness. If the blood covers every word spoken out of our flesh, spoken out of frustration, God, we thank you, God, that every word spoken against our brothers and sisters, every word spoken, God, out of hatred, out of jealousy, out of envy, out of strife, we plead the blood and we're thanking you, God. Hallelujah, that we're exonerated from that. We're thanking you that because of the blood, God, we can come boldly. We can stand in the gap. We can be an intercessor for our family, for this nation, for our city. Hallelujah. For every continent on the earth, we declare the blood and we release the blood, God, over every continent, over every nation, over every culture. God, we're standing in the gap. 
And we pray that the power of the blood, God, will once again God, be exalted. That the power of the blood, hallelujah, will once again be in the mouths of your people. That the understanding of the blood, as it testifies, as it justifies us, as it reconciles us, oh God. That just like the children of Israel, God, that we declare the blood over every doorpost. And therefore, because of the blood, the destroyer cannot come in. In, that it will not come nigh our dwelling. We declare Psalm 91 that we will not fear God the arrows uh, by day or the terror at night. We will not fear. You said in Psalm 91 because we have known your name, you will deliver us. God, because we know your name and we know the power of the blood, you will deliver us, oh God. So we thank you that already we're delivered. We thank you that already we've been redeemed. We thank you that already our family is covered by the blood. And so, God, we stand in the gap and we pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for those, oh God, that whether by plague or by any other means, God, you told us to mourn with those who mourn and weep with those who weep. And so, God, even for them, God, we pray for their comfort. We mourn with those who mourn. We rejoice with those who rejoice. But we pray that they will also come to know the power of the blood, the power of the blood that's able to still say, grave, where is your victory? I'm, I'm deaf, where, uh, where's your victory? Grave, where is your sting? That because of the blood, that even when some of us who have gone from this life to the next, that the death still doesn't have victory because sudden death is sudden glory. And so, God, we stand in the gap for those families, God. We will not, uh, uh, we will not look over those who are hurting, God, who don't understand, God, those who have lost loved ones, and we pray for them. We pray, Jehovah Shalom, that you will show up and manifest yourself to their hearts, oh God, that you will begin to speak, hallelujah, that your blood will begin to speak comfort and compassion and grace to them, that, that God, even in time, God, that they'll get understanding, but for now, we're thanking you for the peace that surpass understanding, that they can get peace even without understanding why, why it had to happen, not, not being comfortable with how it happened, God. We're thanking you for your peace that surpasses understanding that's available because of the blood of Jesus. And so God, we're just giving you the glory now. We're giving you the honor and we're giving you the praise, oh God, that we will never, we will never uh, neglect the blood and the blood never loses its power because you're the same God today, yesterday, and forevermore. And so God, we cry out in unison. I hope you're praying with me. The blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in his name and in his blood, God, we pray every prayer, God. And so we have an expectation of glory. Our expectation is of victory. And we say, thanks be unto you, our Lord and our God, who always causes us to triumph. And God, we know we triumph, not because we're righteous, but because of the testimony of the blood of Jesus. Listen. I pray that this was a blessing to you in some way. If it was, I'd love for you to like and share. Share it to someone that needs to know about the blood. Listen, we've had a lot of candy, uh, lollipop gospel. Listen, it's a time that we get back to the blood. Maybe next time I have a blood song or two, okay? Because there is power in the those songs that in the blood. And I just decree and declare that as you believe in the blood of Jesus, that some of you got your healing. Some of you, depression has lifted off of you. Some of you, that spirit of suicide has been bound in the name of Jesus. I just decree that everybody that's watching because of the blood and because the blood has been loosened, I release it to your house. I, believe, I release it to your mind. I release it to your body. I release it to your blood cells. I release it to your situation because of the blood you triumph and don't you believe any other thing listen because the this case has already been fixed all right bless you love you god bless you hope you tune in and share with somebody all right the blood of jesus is with you amen bless you